Today, I'm joined by Stefan Hanold, Product Manager at ADCO in the Digital Customer Experience Program since 2017. Stefan leads the global and multi-branded configure price quote workstream and has more than 16 years technology and business consulting background, working for global players in various industries, supporting large scale digital transformation and delivery programs. We're also joined by Bagunandan Bhatt, or Ragu as we know him. Ragu is the Infosys account manager for Agco and has worked closely with Agco for three plus years since Agco partnered with Infosys for implementation of its digital transformation journey. Ragu is part of Infosys's sales and engagement team covering the manufacturing industry. He has engaged in multiple configurator projects with some of Infosys's keys customers in Europe during his 14 plus years at Infosys. Yeah, thank you. Thanks a lot for this kind uh, uh, introduction. Uh, I know it's a very interesting subject that we are handling today here. Uh, configurators, you know, it's a, it's always fascinated the configurators to me. Again, uh, it's not something new. Uh, I, I guess everybody in our day-to-day -day life, we are seeing the configurator again as a different roles. We sometimes as a buyer, sometimes as a sellers, end consumers, and that's just keeps on. Uh, enriching our lives every day right uh, and this is where uh, i will just quickly uh, go through the kind of evolution that we had uh, about the configurators uh, since you know looking back this uh, i remember it's been almost uh, 22 23 years back when i would have might have worked for my first configurator project and uh, what you see is generally those times the configurator used to be a kind of uh, a single fat box right everything a single standalone silo applications which used to be everything all the data all the rules every stuff sitting into one box and simply the stuff that is you send some input to it it will configure and get you out a, a configuration you know potentially coupled together with pricing get it as to the code yeah and that's essentially is to do job of course with a better ui sometimes user friendly and things like this and it kept on evolving, right? It, uh, it kept on evolving as as the rest of the enterprise system started evolving. There is a, uh, with the advent of uh, uh, better uh, best practices, design patterns and all that, as the different uh, uh, process areas started separating out, configurator started becoming slimmer as well into the application because it started fitting this kind of more of as a sales application then also or essentially uh, multiple like business process driven applications started coming in and this is where you could start seeing that uh, uh, a bit of uh, CLM started developing you know you must have seen uh, many of other conversations with configure uh, about the CLM uh, and how this whole thing is develops uh, about the single source of truth and all that and that's essentially in many years back the whole uh, evolution started at but if you still look at back to the configurator the configurator still remained with the sole purpose of coming out with a configuration and then based on the tool technology that you will use you will see whether it's a bottom up or a top down and as well However, I think uh, our friends at Configate took a significantly uh, a big leap there with their third generation configurators where they started taking this as a top down view, which you start with the modeling. You look at the whole configurators as a business, uh, business objects and models, and then you drive down to a very valid configurations. And that was a fantastic journey and a very good uh, leap uh, into the configuration. But still, as I said, it still remained to get as a configurator a valid configuration as a, uh, as an outcome of it right but the important uh, i would say a promotion right the configurator got it and its role in uh, stuff is with the digitalization programs as the significantly in last few years when the digitalization program started across different businesses and multiple uh, digital journeys started this is where the whole role of configurator started expanding and it expanded beyond just coming out with a configuration you know uh, i'm trying to bring out some of the examples here what it started doing it better and all that uh, things like uh, the instead of just doing the configurator people started making it a better user experience which allows 
the customers or the users of the contributor to have a much better control uh, or understanding of the products the products were started uh, uh, getting the information about the products uh, educating customers about the products configurator started playing much more as an educator role as well uh, it's kind of a bit more than configuration started marketing the information about the product what are the associated accessories are available for a product what can be the other options what are the benefits of product and this is the way it started slowly getting it helping as hand as a cross seller right so what are the other parts that you can sell it how you can extend the warranties and so these are the various kind of uh, uh, cell capabilities uh, that's where added on top of it uh, uh, the configurator which is making it more richer richer and also started playing this larger role yeah but most of this you could experience you could experience it a front hand you can use it uh, uh, you can access it interact it and you can feel it but one of the last item i think if you as you can see on the screen there is one thing is written is a document this is something that was always happening at the back end which uh, not necessary it was really utilized and this was a kind of i feel uh, underutilized role of a configurator but yes many organizations including aco significantly using this is about documenting the interactions with the customer so what it happens essentially whenever a, a customer is interacting with this configurator it all happens is 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 actually document all the interactions you know like as if i'm a salesperson and i'm go and talk to a customer i'm listening i'm recording all the conversation that i have with my customers and i take notes and then i pass these notes to the designer exactly configurator is doing that job and it's it just matter of the people uh, who are developing the configurator whether they use this information i guess if you are used already configit configit has provides that a facility and a feature which you can then explore you can do analysis but what is important here is the re the recording of that interaction and it may not even happen that that interaction will always result into a configuration but you at least get to see an insight uh, about what a customer is expecting from your configurator or from your product range and i guess this is a very important element of uh, any digitalization journey that uh, uh, somebody should be over uh, looking really forward to and once you do have this data this documentation of these interactions this significantly uh, makes it available to uh, many other ideas you, you know so many different ideas a world uh, it's kind of a world of opportunity gets opened up uh, to process more uh, onto this part right and again this is what this kind of the fascinating um, uh, evolution is what we could also see in aqua you know especially in terms of a configurator uh, uh, and this is what when three years back when we got first time introduct introduced uh, to the uh, to the discussions and we started talking about it and this was like amazing hey we could bring that kind of a power into the configurator and we got into a kind of a uh, we got into this with uh, with the expectation that hey we have to make it we have to bring this full power of a configurator uh, out and help aqua uh, to make it absolutely success right uh, again i won't go in it's very fascinating and interesting to talk more details about this but i will not take all the thunder out of the topic right away here rather i will uh, request uh, stefan to take this ahead where he can introduce more about uh, aqua as a business and also the digital transformation journey there over to you stefan uh, am i audible yes good so thank you for the introductory words um, I need to explain a little bit the heritage and vision of ACO to really understand the journey um, which we started three years back. We just came as a ACO as a company uh, out of our 30 years anniversary, so uh, we are not that old. <clears throat> ACO is overall a leading uh, solution provider in the agricultural industry. We are multi-brand, and I'm uh, mentioning this because this is also a dimension which I will tackle later on also. We've got Valtra, Grain and Protein, but most of you may know the Massey Ferguson and Fent tractors, of course. This company was created from mergers and acquisitions. So the post-merger integration is still quite a huge challenge for us. We've got still disparate data systems, but most critical, even different strategies and processes. And same is true, not only for the brands, 
but also for the regional presences in in EME, in North America, in South America, and the APA region. And this even multiplies the mentioned, the already mentioned challenge. Our head office is in the US, but we have a very global footprint and very strong local presence through our dealer network between us and the end customer. And this is also a point I want to come back later on. We've got the dealer network. This is a very powerful means to sell products, but sometimes perhaps the, the, the world also is changing here. Today, the dealers uh, are there for sales, service and parts, but um, perhaps we are changing this as mentioned from the B2B to C model, even to a more B2C uh, model as well. We started uh, from steel and iron, right? You, you may know the green tractors and, and red combines and some implements. But recently, um, not only recently, but we extended our product range really now to full line, covering the wide area of machinery a farmer really needs throughout the crop cycle and value chain. So this includes now also sprayers, planters, forage harvesters, and, and all other sorts of hay tools, grain and protein solutions and everything. But this is still a little bit steel and iron, right? What is now <clears throat> coming into the play since 10, 20 years even, perhaps started 20 years back, is the connected solutions, right? So we've got guidance systems, task documentations, farm management stuff, predictive, predictive maintenance, over the air controlled machine diagnosis and management, and other, of course, satellite or sensor and data-based solutions for customers, dealers, and ourselves. So what's, what's the vision uh, of our company, company? So we've got another slide. And for this one, Ragu, if you want to switch the slide also. Yes, thank you. So it's not only about profitable growth, it's mentioned here, but the middle class really demands now high quality food and animal protein. In the next 40 years, the farmers of the world will have to grow more food than humanity has ever grown in the, in the past thousands of years, right? And yet there are constraints, of course. There's limited arable land for agriculture. Climate fluctuations, rising temperatures, and everything is threatening the productive agricultural land we do have. And as living standards rise, so do expectations. People demand more sustainable ways of growing and eating. And even as demand for animal protein rises, so do concerns about animal welfare. So it's not only about any more um, machines only, it's about sustainability. But all these challenges are really presenting also opportunities. The world's future depends on the food security. We understand there are changing societal expectations related to sustainable, sustainable agriculture and animal welfare. We've got a certain responsibility for resources, soil and diesel consumption. But what I also want to, to, to mention is how we tackle this now on the next slide. We are focused on very smart solutions, and this is now slowly the transition to our program. And smart solutions across the agricultural value chain. We want to ensure our customers' operations are always up and running because the crop cycle and the weather conditions allow sometimes very small windows to do all uh, the stuff uh, like farm planning, field preparation, planting, growing, and everything. So these, all these agro smart farming innovations help the farms and machines run more efficiently with lower inputs and higher yields, producing more with less. I think this is the crucial news, a new uh, topic which we need to follow. Um, and our smart solutions are really built for productivity from the ground up. They sense the environment, determine action based on the information gathered and execute optimally based on the data in real time. So data is, of course, the new password we all need to follow. So that means SACO supports sustainable agriculture through innovative smart machinery, highly efficient productive solutions, and advanced connectivity. But this is not the only thing what we are heading for. On the next slide we can see um, that uh, there's also um, an evolution in the retail <clears throat> process. So the retail status quo is still that there's the dealer in between. So it's a strong relationship still there. But we can see in other industries, of course, that the 
typical first touch point is, is of course already online but uh, in our industry to buy a, a tractor with half a million um, dollars worth this needs to be prepared very very <clears throat> well but anyways the change of the retail is also hitting the farm um, process here and anyways our customers out there are online already so they are they have evolved from typical traditional farmers to really digital natives perhaps <clears throat> already so what we did and um, we uh, really uh, <clears throat> started th this program to rethink everything right digital and physical retail standards everything uh, we uh, turned everything around and put the customer in the middle and the customer in the middle says we've got this typical moments of truth and mo most probably you know this cycle from liking to considering to buying and and uh, performing returning and knowing of course and what we did here we wanted to have a seamless end-to-end -end digital customer experience and so it's not only a set of tools what we just uh, built here together uh, with Infosys and, and configured when we partnered three years back. It's a whole new solution and a whole new ecosystem. For example, we built an e-commerce store. So to sell really genuine parts and complementary products also directly to the end customer if he wishes to, right? And we've got dealer portals and customer portals. They are guaranteeing a really personalized um, um, user experience and user experience, and they are bringing the, the customers and dealers closer, really closer to the brand. For the dealer, um, it's a connection to Akko, right? And, uh, and, and it's offering a one-stop shop for communications, tools, and applications. But the really co real cool thing what we built in the portal area is the on and off board services. So the user experience is really the same whenever you sit on the machine uh, compared to when you prepare or you work in the office. So all the icons, all the processes, all the UI is really looking exactly the same. We call it on and off board services. Um, <clears throat> We can use it in the office anywhere and on the machine. So, of course, then we've got the data and analytics, right? So we want to do uh, um, optimal decisions based on data and smart analytics, not only on gut feelings, of course. So this includes weather data and uh, other data as well, soil data, <coughs> purchase data, everything. Then in between, uh, we've got the customer relationship management, right? So here we want uh, to enable uh, better dealer sales management, automated generation of leads, and overall this improves the customer retention. But last but not least is the CPQ. CPQ is also mentioned twice on this page. <clears throat> on the one hand, on the right hand side to be precise, and there's the CPQ for the new machines. But what we did, is also to build a CPQ for the after sales so you, so you can upgrade your machine and your solution. And so we've got a more holistic view on the on the whole stuff here. It's not only the new machines, it's the whole life cycle that we want to cover with the CPQ. And it's not only for the dealers, of course. We're using the same engine for prospects in the internet or for customers, which we know already, so that they really e very easily can configure and create a machine or solution, including services or accessories um, for their new machines and used machines, anytime and anywhere. That means also it needs to be mobile, responsive, and offline. So we've built also an offline solution, so we don't need the internet at all. And uh, <clears throat> this is all uh, supported, of course, by a digital asset management, right? So only one central tool uh, for the brand visuals, uh, supported again by uh, product information management. So to ensure a consistent product information for dealers and customers across all the channels, and of course, um, a master data management. So on next page, we can see how we tackled some of the challenges. Basically, the the biggest challenge at the beginning was the multi-brand. Each of the brands said, hey, we are unique. We need to have a, 
separate and own solution. We are the best and we want to have something different. Because Vent is, of course, different than Masse and Valtra, right? Um, and we could understand that they want to keep their, their, their DNA. So what we did is not building three different solutions, of course, right? We, want, we only differentiated on the UX, on the, on the highest level. And we wanted to keep the, the impact on the data structures and underlying systems, even perhaps from zero to minimal. Even. Then we found from this post-merger integrations, this disparate data and systems for brands, but also businesses, whole goods and aftersales, everything totally different. What we introduced is this master data governance. So we are abstracting the differences in data from different factories even, uh, legacy system, countries, and everything. So the third thing, we didn't find structured data. So, um, so the data was there. So um, ACO knew a lot, but at the end, it was not structured. So what we did also together with Infosys, we started a data gathering exercise to structure all the data that we found in all the systems and converted this into a very structured format. So this all, um, and the, 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 the big question is how, how have we tackled the agricultural industry trends now with configured with the CPQ solution, which we can see on the, on the next slide also. So first thing is customer centricity. We learned already CPQ is embedded everywhere. So that means that this is already personalized. <clears throat> so, but on the other hand, we are learning also from these personalized configurations and getting some insights about the customer, of course, the customer needs. There is still the dealer autonomy. <clears throat> so the dealer is the primary face towards the customer. But what we did is uh, we made uh, our systems look like if this is a dealer system. So the dealer can lo load up uh, his logo, terms and conditions, and customize quotes and everything. And we integ integrated um, to their ERP systems, and we are loading their customer data even. So it looks like their system, but is ours, and is totally integrated. Offline capability, I already mentioned this. <clears throat> so farmers, even in Germany, still are in remote places, but we are bringing the showroom and the capability um, to easily configure the so solution to the customer's kitchen table anywhere at any time. And this can only be done by offline, <clears throat> combined with online, of course. And the digital DNA <clears throat> is really in established inside the configuration. This can be leveraged then across the product life cycle. So we call it as built bomb, as maintained bomb, so bill of material, and as service bomb. And um, and so on. And another thing that was really crucial for us was the time to market. So we only used the ready-made interfaces and, and uh, best of technologies like, of course, Configit, Adobe, Salesforce, SubCommerce. And recently, what we also found out is um, not to sell the whole full solution, the full ecosystem to the dealers, but we modularized a little bit our stuff so um, today, for example, the configure only can be used by in 15 European countries already. And we've got, uh, we established also a light version, a little bit decoupled of the Salesforce. So we are totally flexible in everything. So over to you, Raghu, again. Isn't it an amazing journey, right? So many things. And I think what we could achieve is simply because of the, uh, because of this, the platform that we built it right it, it has flexible and it can just go in expand in into multiple direction and this where this is a small this is a part that i will talk now in a short uh, time is about how how once this is a kind of a base that we built it uh, you know uh, with this uh, are we satisfied hey we satisfied with what we've done so far but that also gave us new goals the way how we can go upstream and downstream and build significant influence on the business right uh, i will give some examples into this how we try to manage this as we go forward you know although we concentrating still on the sales as a significant important element of it but we started also looking at how the data that we capture how the interactions that we captured in configurator can be influenced the other processes within the organization how it can help the overall stickiness of customer with ACO. Right. Some of the examples are coming from here, but obviously I think there are some other ideas 
uh, which you if you are also on, on this configurator journey you can think of and implementing it of course this will some of these things would change from business to, to business but there is a, a quite interesting things and again this is just some sample examples here uh, there is no dearth of uh, uh, new ideas and creativity that you can bring in because you once you to have this solid base of uh, uh, gathering this information and customer interactions together you can just play with it uh, to bring significant business benefits yeah let me start first with the downstream kind of stuff what can be how the manufacturing planning services can be benefited uh, once th this is there is intended uh, as we see in configuration and whole digitalization is uh, uh, digitalization is increasing there is also a significant expectation rise that customers are looking forward to understand for what time my uh, product will be available to me. You know, it's not gone are the days where you uh, actually book an order and just keeps on endlessly wait till the time you get to know about it. No, you don't need to do that. Configuration data because configuration integrated together with the manufacturing can actually predict and uh, predict the uh, actual delivery times. Uh, not only that there can be a, a certain business ideas can be brought in with a premium uh, additional premium and all that you can be even pre uh, or pre uh, process your the entire order much earlier there are many of these ideas can be the business can talk about inventory optimization has been a well-known use case of uh, the whole clm that we seen earlier as well uh, it also goes and benefits at the engineering side for optimizing the overall their design which are the configurations are not being used at all which are the uh, config uh, specific uh, accessories they are not being ever bundled at, at all with the customers uh, the organizations are able to look at into this data do that analytics and then decide why do i'm just maintaining this inventory because this is not being purchased ever the other element in typically in auto industry and also in uh, agri equipment industry is about the whole forecasting about the sales and uh, visibility into the pipeline uh, just to ensure that the customer is lo not lost many times the dealers and all go with a, a highly sellable uh, product uh, already pre-ordered and keep it into their inventory so even even if the organizations like aco may not want to build make to stock kind of order there is this has been done at a dealers which may also sometime uh, add, uh, sometime can be an obstacle in selling more uh, products for the companies but giving this kind of visibility can also ensure that there is a much better control over the sales and uh, uh, sales pipelines right uh, not only this about the services yeah i think they you, if you have been owning the cars there have been already in the cars industry the people have been once you provide up your win you can get your entire service manual uh, and tailored operational manual available to you on maybe on mobile but is that what you have to wait till still the win gets uh, uh, completely done not required because based on your configuration that you order there is an opportunity that the entire service manuals and uh, operational manuals can be made available to you and you can actually go and start uh, learning about the product much earlier get trained uh, and as soon as the product is available you can uh, deliver to you you can still go and start using it right away many other benefits right uh, the one of the stuff which has already been uh, partially implemented and actually going to be extendedly uh, uh, updated within the ARCO and also the DCX uh, program is about uh, accurate part suggestions and uh, guided upgrade and enhancement. That's where Stephen talked about the accessories configurator from the after sales, which has been uh, significantly been proving to be a uh, very attractive for most of the customers and dealers and they are really getting hooked on and because the kind of benefits that we saw there where people used to take some uh, some of the queries earlier used to take uh, maybe up to let's say one eight to ten days can just now start happening in within 10 to 25 minutes right and that's i think is a real benefit of this digital uh, journeys and role of configurator uh, to improve the overall customer satisfaction of course the configurator plays anyway into the role of uh, uh, improving the overall product uh, uh, benefit the clm has been proven already how a, a new product can be introduced much faster right I, I don't want to go in detail because the whole webinar and there could be series of webinars will be required for clms itself but going to the specific the sales part of it guided selling has been around and uh, you know providing recommendation but this is an area where configurator is playing a significant role and especially in uh, any digital transformation where 
introducing the product making the product aware to the customer and all that and with the recent uh, especially in 2020 what we start seeing it is this whole covid you know pandemic has uh, impacted is about the physical uh, physical touch or the physical uh, uh, exploration of the machines which may not be practical at all times and see today we are in the event which is a virtual event try to interact why not the showrooms are virtual why not the uh, uh, dealer events are happening on virtual no they are happening and this is where the CLM is going to play a significant role because uh, it's not about just making a configurator to be allowed at those kind of events but making the product feel whatever the product is being going to be demonstrated to the customers they should be able to see it feel it and explore it at those kind of virtual events and this is going to be an critical as part of any uh, digitalization journey that uh, most of the business are executing and again this is not just this is what something that we could uh, see it from directly from customers coming in but uh, it's also been uh, amplified by a recent survey by McKinsey and I think I will be very happy to share you this information with you uh, in this particularly this survey done by McKinsey in uh, for uh, agriculture sector about the utilization of a digital in across the different phases of a selling and decision making happens about a, a buying so it was quite well known from the beginning that the, during the very initial time like a crop planning and choosing the products and all that digitalization has been already been significantly active which was anyway was uh, confirmed reconfirmed again now in this survey but also is seen that this is increased adoption there but the significant benefit that you see and where and this is a real play area for a configurator is into the uh, the areas that i have marked it here you know deciding on the supplier receiving the pro price proposals these are the real uh, outputs of a configurator and this will make the whole digitalization journey uh, much faster much more faster adopted by the customers and this is where the success of uh, uh, any business will um, uh, business will happen uh, going forward yeah again uh, but as we do this kind of journeys one of the important element that we have to uh, keep in our mind uh, is about involvement of customer it's not about like old ways where we just go and start developing the product uh, complete and user acceptance testing and just launch it no Stephen talked about it already and I think this is where Stephen will bring one of a uh, critical success mantra that happened uh, for in DCX uh, and why it is being uh, being a success and I think I hand it over back again to Stephen to talk on that particular topic. Exactly. Thank you, Raghu, again. So <clears throat> we, are, we have changed our project methodology so um, to Agile. We are using the methodology SAFE, but doesn't matter. Agile is really now to, uh, <clears throat> to increase the productivity and to have a faster time to market, but also um, include customers and dealers' feedback much, much earlier in the process. So uh, on the next slide, we can see how we tackle that, right? So we are focusing now on delivering a continuous flow of outcomes rather than waiting half a, half a year from design, build, test uh, to run um, after we got some feedback. So uh, on the second point, I will elaborate uh, a little bit later. <clears throat> so we engaging um, our customers and dealers much, much earlier as said. We are delivering in sprints. So it's four weeks or eight weeks um, that we are, need to wait for something, or even in, in, in smaller cycles, we are bringing the feedbacks back uh, to the market. And overall, it's a, a, a cultural change for us. And this was enabled by this methodology, of course. Um, we said the customer should be in the middle, so customer centricity, product centricity, and all this, we are pioneering this uh, within this DCX program but uh, we are also spreading the news to the whole ACO company. So it's a transformation starting from here. And on the next slide, you can see how we are integrating uh, the customer and dealer's feedback a little bit better than in the past. So uh, typically our product lifecycle uh, is idea, ideate, <clears throat> create, deploy, and adopt. And uh, of course, in the first phase even, um, we are inviting the dealers to our planning sessions. We had just one last week and the dealers had live slots in there, not only to give us the positive feedback, uh, how good everything is running, or, but also the critical stuff and what they want to have. So what they are seeing out there um, as latest insights. 
Of course, we've got dealer panels. Still, we are doing, of course, some, some market research and customer panels as well and persona design mapping in the ideate phase, but this isn't stopping here. So in the create phase, we are doing the co-creation. So we are working together with dealers and customers on the product. We're doing the field test. So we are not sitting in the ivory tower in Markt Oberdorf in Sassan, part of Germany and building and designing and building something. So we are going out to the field, um, also literally with our machines, but also with our solutions. Then the next one, if you are going to deploy the whole stuff, we are piloting this with uh, the dealers. So if whenever the solution has a ready state of 80, 90%, you're going out to some friendly, friendly pilot uh, dealer, uh, dealers and getting their feedback, how to get the max out of this uh, solution again. And last but not least, we are not leaving the dealers uh, and customers alone uh, whenever we deployed the whole stuff. So we are analyzing um, through the success insights, through the data analytics, how we exactly doing, how they are exactly using the system. And there's of course a digital support center out there when uh, we uh, can touch base with the customers and dealers and they with us. And on the last slide, of course, I want to present some success stories and also some challenge, challenges still. So the CPQ and the whole ecosystem is really well perceived out there and um, we outperformed the legacy solution already in, in one market. And uh, the C solution for the accessories is also well acknowledged in 15 countries already in Europe. So um and we've got this live dealer feedback it's not a fake dealer feedback it's live dealer feedback and we only said to the dealer come to our session you've got the five minute slot and then you're free to talk we didn't say hey please uh, emphasize only the positive things because my boss is there right so uh, it's really live dealer feedback and there's much much more to come and we, we are very excited though about this like the 3d stuff the virtual launch center digital showrooms what uh who also just pointed out we need to have this. We need to go for the B2C, the direct sales. And anyways, uh, we are leaving the Europe and going to the global uh, It needs to scale. Apart from that, there are also some challenges, right? The COVID learned, uh, told us that we need to uh, invest in e-learning, but this is something new to the dealers. They are very traditional, it takes some time. We need to set some incentives here, perhaps. The integration, we talked about that. So, uh, we all need this goldenized stuff, right? Goldenized machine data, customer data, everything. But the governance and the technology here is not to be underestimated overall. And then the deployment, we want it to be faster, but uh, it takes some time in some areas. Uh, we need to industrialize the process a little bit, focus on the deployment playbook, and just be faster to scale up a little bit. So that's it. What I wanted to also tell uh, the audience with regards to methodology and what we learned so far, test stories. I believe you can go now to uh, the question and answers area, if there are any. Infosys is the platform for sales configuration. Is ADCO using the same ERP and platform internally in ADCO? So uh, I think we are using uh, configured as the rules engine um, and we are using the SAP system as our backend uh, system uh, also for fulfillment and the Salesforce in between as a customer relationship management. So that's the high level system architecture. The next question I've got lined up here is what is the conceptual approach on the different dimensions of configuration, product versus service versus system versus commercial conditions? I think uh, uh, we have to understand this question, especially in the way the DCX uh, was organized. I think Stephen talked about there has been multiple brands that have been there uh, in ACO, and we have to also maintain the individuality of the brand, maintain their differentiator in the market. So the way DCX played it as a role is that it's first try to concentrate on the platform to ensure there is the process has been a common process across while the data or the content can come from various different ERP systems. So the data for all the products from could be coming from for a one brand could be different as compared to the others. And that's the way the, the two layers were separated out, uh, uh, two layers were separated out. And with this, the whole, uh, whole uh, configurators were built. So if you go and actually utilize that, the individuality and the brand differentiation of a configuration as a part of product 
will not disturb as uh, uh, from one brand to other brand they will still have that opportunity to be unique and differentiating but when it comes to the process of the post processing like the services and all that there has been a, a, a common approach because most of the dealers are going to follow the similar approach there so that's the where the it's it's which it was going more, more than a technology it was governed from the business side how uh, certain these features approaches over the configurator would work around but the underlying technology platform always remains same and even also in single instance that's a very important architecture decision that was taken super there's also a question around um, is Akko receiving order through the platform yes so the the great thing about the whole um, platform or system ecosystem is that it's fully integrated so you can explore the product at the very beginning you can configure the product so that you that you receive uh, something that you really need uh, with the guided selling questions and what is really also buildable from our end and then the whole stuff is immediately shot in into our fulfillment system yes it's totally integrated has covid impacted your rollout plans in 2020 what is the strategy that you have taken for dealers and end customers in this digital adoption yeah so i think um we were anyways on the right path with this whole digital um project and it gave us only some uh some push even more right so so to be a little bit faster than what we anticipated and um, uh, what we also thought about is um, about this modular approach so to give some parts of the solution immediately uh, to the to the dealers and customers out there like the c solution so we modularized a little bit and overall mm -hmm. it gave us a push the COVID situation uh, because uh, it's anyways what we need now more is digital and we heard what uh, um, Agu also said is about this uh, virtual showroom stuff, and this is also totally integrated in our starting point for the CPQ in future. So it helped us even. So you talked about CLM. Is it relevant in renewed challenges for configurator, like for example, your virtual events? Yes, certainly. I think let me handle that question. Uh, it certainly makes sense, and rather it's a prerequisite, I would say, because What's going to happen with this? Configurators are not getting launched anymore as from some other portals or stuff. Whether configurator itself becomes a front end to the uh, to the customers as part of those virtual events, and that's why customer the configurators needs to also play role of presenting the product, make it a product much more visually aware. Maybe 3D interactions with the product where the customer needs to go and explore the product well, and this will not be just happen without having a very uh, title integration with the single source of truth where the data is also coming from the engineering the be it a plm systems uh, in whichever technology or the uh, design systems they need to be integrated together with the same product hierarchy and the product needs to be shown to this so and of course the rest of the downstream system where if the people are look uh, happy with the products that they are seeing in the virtual events and showrooms they may just go ahead and configure it and order it and this uh, this whole process seamlessly is possible only when the CLM is in a place yep is your SAP back office the foundation or starting point for your product content management if so which PCM or PIM solution are you leveraging so we are using the SAP commerce also formerly known as SAP uh, hybrid system as a um, <coughs> separate um, PIM system also for other solutions uh, like uh, the uh, customer portal and everything else so sub hybrid sub commerce Stefan what made you choose uh, configured as the configurator or CPQ technology did you compare other technologies feel free to be open about this one <laughs> well of course configured is um, uh, I need to tell um, that configured that there's a, a smart team behind that really, and uh, the product itself um, really convinced us. Um, uh, but there's one one crucial functionality which is also the offline, and the virtual tabulation which is used uh, within these uh, tools from configured, and this helped us much.